You have just articulated two Christian worldviews. The idea that thunder is a natural phenomena, which is a Christian worldview, and the idea that we should treat others as we want to be treated, which is a Christian worldview. Now, you've been taught that by a liberal, enlightenment, secular society. But that liberal, enlightened, secular society got that teaching from Christianity. So it's like you received it from liberal, enlightened, secular society who received it from a slightly less Christian world that received it from a Christian world. And that's where your ideas and beliefs have come from. Secular atheists are borrowing, as you have borrowed, from the teachings of my religion. And you're right, it made you a better person. Totally agree with you. Okay, guys, does anyone else want to have a chat or a talk or ask a question before I go on and do a talk? Okay, then. Right, then. Uh, I haven't got a topic. I'm asking if anyone wants to have a talk or ask a question. Yeah. Yeah, go on, then. Do you want a talk or a, a question? I'd like you to explain to me... Is it a talk or a question? Talk. We can do a talk. Yeah. Do you want to stand there, bro? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure. Okay. So, Michael, by the way. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bob. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you Bob. Yeah, yeah, I've seen your YouTube videos. That's what's kind of drawn me here. Right. Um, so I'm a complete atheist. Okay. Don't believe in anything. You know, today's meant to be atheist day. Oh, is it? No way. Yeah, okay, thank fair you. Enough. Fair enough. Yes, please. Yeah, go on. Uh, so I'm a man of science. Um, yeah, me too. Okay. Studied okay. physics at uni. Oh, really? Oh, well. Um, I want you to explain to me why your religion yeah. should be chosen over any other religion, say Islam, Hinduism, things like that. Okay. What, what makes your religion correct? I'm going to give you three reasons. Okay. The first reason is that belief in God is sensible. And I'm going to give you a, 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 a reason why uh, belief in God is sensible. Mathematics is a language. Mathematics is a, a, a means of communication that by which we describe the natural world. We use it in physics all the time. Mathematicians will tell you that nine, over 90% of mathematicians are what are called Platonists, which means that they don't believe that they are um, inventing mathematics. They believe that they are discovering mathematics. They're using first principles and then building on those first principles, they're discovering mathematical formulae um, independently of observations, right? Uh, one example of this would be the Brendelbot, the Mendelbot uh, number, the Mendelbot brot sequence, right? Um, mathematics is, is something that, that we, we, you can, there, there are countless examples of where mathematical formulae that are given through mathematicians' own workings suddenly, immediately translate into the physical world. In other words, they are describing the physical world. Right? There's countless examples of that. It, for instance, the, uh, the, the, I think it was the, the Mercury's orbit around the Sun or the discovery of Uranus was done through mathematics, right? Mathematics is coded into the universe, which means that a language is coded into the universe independent of our minds. We are discovering mathematics in the universe and that mathematics was there before we discovered it. Mathematics shows us that a mind must be behind the universe, that mind we call God. So the mess, my first reason is that belief in God is sensible. My second reason, and then I'll let you reply. Sorry, my third reason, I'll do three reasons and then I'll let you reply. My second reason is the, the fulfillment of prophecy in scripture. In, I think it's in Malachi chapter one, I think it's verse eight. It says that there will come a time when the nations of the world will incense the name of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh of armies, right? Now, that was a prophecy given hundreds of years before Christ, at least 600 years before Christ. Christ comes and he turns Judaism into a missionary religion, right? 
Fast forward 1,900 years later, at the back end of a grand missionary movement of the church, and all around the world today, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Yahweh, his name is incensed by Gentile nations, by the nations of the world. So a prophecy that was given over 2,600 years ago has been fulfilled in the 1900s. That prof prophecy has been completed. So that's my second reason, miraculous fulfillment of prophecy. My third reason is that when you look at the teachings of Jesus Christ and you practice them, it makes man better. It makes human beings better human beings. It makes men better men. It makes women better women. And it makes nations better nations. And so those are my three reasons why you should choose Christianity as being true. Okay. okay. Um, your first point yep. I, about religion, uh, about your God being sensible. Uh, Belief in God being sensible. Yeah, and, and mathematics, uh, that we are discovering it. A absolutely, 100%. You're, you're, you're not wrong. I completely agree with that. Um, your second point, um, however, I took issue with, which was, no, sorry, your third point. Your second, sorry, can you remind me your second? So the second point, point is, let me, let me show you, all right? So the, the prophecy that I'm about to show you was written at least 2,600 years ago, okay? Bear with us one second. Yeah, no problem. I saw your video about why the crusade... I'm sorry, I'm just talking to him, bro. And this is my problem with Islam. <laughs> well, yes, this, 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 the thing is, right, the thing is, in, in this park, every single Sunday, Muslims assault other people, they harass other people, they attack other people. The police over there never do a damn thing. Never do a damn Two -tier thing. Two-tier police, my man. Yep. Two-tier police. Absolutely. Just bear with us one second. No, I haven't. I haven't. Bear with us. Oh dear. Thank you. That's all right. It's nice to actually have someone that has a, a civilized debate. I would like a civilized rather debate. Than, uh, that, rather than that, shouting over each other. That is what this corner is meant to be about. Bear with us. Right, if I don't get it soon, I'm just going to use the phone. Right. Lunch breaks over. <laughs> Honestly, the police are a joke here. You know? They're a joke everywhere. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, in here then. Right. You can see me uh, getting out the the phone for this. Yeah, I am. GPT, yeah. No, no, no. Just Google. I know the verse I'm looking for. I've clearly just rem misremembered the evidence. So. Be interesting to get your thoughts on AI and religion as well. Yeah, we can talk about that. Absolutely. I think. I think. I think AI is gonna. No, it's not that one. It's not that one. It's not. It's in the Old Testament. Uh, not that one. Everyone is crying out for Bob, man. Right, it's in, it's in Malachi 1.11.
So let me just pull that up for you and I'll show you. Not a problem. Right. And I, I, so the thing is, if, if there is a prophecy that seems highly unlikely uh, and then it is fulfilled, yeah, of course, you never need to ask permission. You've always, always got it. I've given you a like, perpetual when permission. When you say fulfilled, you mean completely You're going to see it, yeah. Look, so in Malachi chapter 1, verse 11, right, it says this, right? Bear with us. For from the rising of the sun, even unto its setting, my name will be great amongst the nations, and in every place incense is going to be offered to my name, and a grain, and a grain offering that is pure for my name will be great amongst the nations. So what, what, what's that saying is that all around the world, night and day, all day and all night, everywhere around the world, all peoples will incense the name of the Lord. They will offer food in the name of the Lord, right? And they're going to do that all the time, everywhere. Now, this was 2,600 years ago. In the 1600s, a missionary effort started that reached its zenith in the 1800s and petered out in the 1900s. At the end of that 300-year missionary splurge at the church, what resulted it, what was the result was that the church became a global religion. It's in every country. It's even been celebrated on the moon. Neil Armstrong practiced Christianity on the moon. Like, it's celebrated, it was celebrated in the North Pole and the South Pole. It's celebrated everywhere. And Christians, night and day, around the world, literally offer up incense to the Lord of hosts. Christians literally offer food in the name of the Lord of hosts when they give it to the poor. So everywhere around the world, that prophecy from 2,600 years ago has now been fulfilled. My issue with that is that how can you call it a prophecy yeah. if everyone like yourself was going around missionaries as well and yeah. telling everyone hey look this is this is what it said in our, our scripture or this was you know it went through generations to generations to generations yeah so, of course everyone has carried on that religion yeah that then becomes true because there's such a mass of people yeah that support that religion so right let me let me explain so it's a good question and it's a fair question and this is what Speaker's Corner is supposed to be about, this kind of interlock, interlocution, is that when, when Malachi was speaking, Judaism was a tribal religion, right? He was speaking 600 years before Jesus, right? The tribal religion of Jews, they didn't see it as their duty to go out and convert Gentiles. In fact, they went to great lengths to separate themselves from Gentiles. You know who I mean by Gentiles, right? Gentiles, Jews. No, no. Um, right, so just to clarify I terms. Don't, I don't really know. That's okay, that's okay. Religion. Yeah, so, so Jews, Jews are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Gentiles is everybody else. Okay. Right, so you're Goyim, I'm Goyim. Yeah, right. we're, we're, we're Gentiles. That's how we translate okay. Goyim into English, Gentiles. Right. Right? The dirty Goyim, the dirty Gentiles, right? But that, and I, and I make that in jest, but that's literally how um, the Malachian Jews understood the Goyim. They understood them as dirty. They didn't want to associate with them. They wanted to keep them back, right? We, we had to keep a wall of separation between them and us. That was their attitude. That was 600 years before Jesus. But the prophecies of the Old Testament are that when the Messiah comes, that's going to change. And the Messiah will change it. And so Jesus comes, he, he proclaims himself the Messiah, which was celebrated today, actually, 2,000 years ago, because today is Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry into the Jerusalem. I'll be speaking on it later, right? That, that Messiah changed Judaism and sent the church out into the nations 2,000 years ago. There's no promise that they would have succeeded Right? Christians could have been snuffed out by the Romans. They could have been snuffed out by the pagans. They could have been snuffed out by the Muslims. 
They could have been snuffed out by Napoleon. They could have been snuffed out by Hitler. They could have been snuffed out by communism. There's no guarantee that any of this would have succeeded. Their mission, even if they weren't snuffed out, their missionary efforts could have failed. No one accepted the religion. Everybody rejects the religion, right? So you, you, you just think, compute for yourself all the possible ways that this could not have happened, right? But then in the 1600s, the Catholic Church starts this grand missionary movement, right? And then in the 1800s, Protestants get in on the act as well. And they do it on like steroids, right? And before, and before the close of the 1950s, Christianity is the world's leading faith in all nations. Which means that this prophecy of 2,600 years ago has been fulfilled. That's a miracle, bro. I wouldn't call it a miracle myself. What would you call it? I would say coincidence. Lucky coincidence, then. Yeah. Right, yeah, but then let's. Me. But then let's. You're talking mathematics as well. There's yeah. A certain, a certain point, the numbers line up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. No, no. I, I, absolutely. But but what I'm pointing out to you is that there was no reason for a, a, a Jew to to write a prophecy like that, given their own personal attitudes which was one of disgust to Gentiles, except that the Spirit of God put it in them to write it against their own culture. Remember that? A, Je a, a Jewish prophet who has the attitude that you're dirty goyim, I don't, want to be, I don't want to touch you, I don't want to be near you because then I can't worship Yahweh in the temple, okay. writes a prophecy against his own prejudice in which he says that the nations of the world will worship his God. But the one that will bring that about is the Messiah. And then 600 years later, a guy called Jesus of Nazareth, who today we honor and venerate and celebrate his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, sends a Jewish tiny community into the world to start evangelizing the Goyim, to bring them into Israel. And now, all around the world, that's exactly what's happened. The name of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, is incensed by the church, night and day night and day all around the world and we we give a we give a harvest offering when we give to the poor our food which we do all around the world okay i'll, I'll take your point on that and I'll, I'll take it into consideration thank you so much no, you're welcome. so you're the third point the one you had umbridge your, your third point was you, you you said that it makes us better people yeah if we believe in Christ. yeah so if we follow Christ not believe in Christ okay, follow if we, Christ if, if we follow well to follow is to believe right no people can believe in Christ without following him okay okay so that means by that logic that everyone that doesn't follow is a lesser man everyone who doesn't follow Jesus's teachings is not living up to the fullness of their own dignity. They're like uh, an alcoholic who is addicted and enslaved to their addiction. That is not where they should be. They can be better. So anyone who's not following Christ's teachings has, has this improvement that they can make to themselves. I would disagree with that because... Okay, go on. Um, I'll use myself an example, yeah. as an example, and I don't want to blow my own trumpet or anything like that. But yeah. I give to the homeless. Um, Thanks be to if, God. If, if I walk past a homeless person, I will go in and buy them food yeah. and, and give them food because yeah. they're suffering and I can see that. Yeah. I don't follow any religion at all. Yeah. I, I'm just a good, honest, nice person because yeah. I respect others and I think that's, it, you know, I would treat you with respect because I would like respect back. Yeah. And that makes me a good human being. Right. I don't, I don't think you can improve on that. Can I, can I come back? Right. So you've just said this, right? Listen to this, guys, because this is going to be beautiful, right? You just said to me that you respect me because you would like me to respect you. So would it be fair to say that you're treating me as you would like to be treated? Right. Who taught that? Where does that idea come from? Jesus. Thank you. Jesus said, right, quoting the Old Testament prophets, he said, love your neighbor as yourself and treat others as you want to be treated. So 
you're literally taking as an example of your own sort of valid moral position the teachings of Jesus to justify it and I agree following the teachings of Jesus has made you a better man you're totally right you followed the teachings of Jesus and you are right to say it has made you a better man well no because I'm not no you are I, I don't believe in it I, I don't believe that there is 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 and I don't want to sound disrespectful yeah. or anything but no you're not I don't believe there there is an almighty creator yeah. there is anyone I think my personal opinion is yeah. the same as the Quran and the Bible. I think that people wrote them at a time yeah. and they understood things differently. Yeah. The same as the Vikings, they thought thunder was four. Yeah. We now know today that yeah. no, it's just the weather system and, and, and we can prove it. Yeah, Christians were the ones that gave that attitude, by the way. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll ask for take four. My, my, my point to you is, my point to you is, a lot of atheists like yourself, and I don't mean to disrespect you just like you weren't trying to disrespect me, but a lot of atheists like yourself are actually hugely historically ignorant. If, I, if say, this brother here gives 20 pound, a £20 note to this sister here, and then this sister here gives that same £20 note to this brother here, and this brother here gives that £20 note to you, where did that £20 note come well, from? I think it comes bank, from right, you think it comes bank, from him. Bank. Right, but it actually originated from him. So let me just tell you this, like connect it all together. You have just articulated two Christian worldviews. The idea that thunder is a natural phenomena, which is a Christian worldview, and the idea that we should treat others as we want to be treated, which is a Christian worldview. Now you've been taught that by a liberal, enlightenment, secular society. But that liberal, enlightened, secular society got that teaching from Christianity. So it's like you received it from liberal, enlightened, secular society who received it from a slightly less Christian world that received it from a Christian world. And that's where your ideas and beliefs have come from. Secular atheists are borrowing, as you have borrowed, from the teachings of my religion. And you're right, it made you a better person. Totally agree with you. It has, but can't life... Things that we go through in life can change us as people. It doesn't of course, necessarily yes. equate to religion. Um, but are you, trying, are you trying to say anyone could have just come up with this teaching? Essentially, yeah. Right. That's, that's what I believe. I think that everyone that, that wrote the, the books, yeah. these holy books, yeah. were, could have been schizophrenic, could have been seeing things. Right, hold on, hold on one second, right? You, you, have, you have used my teachings to demonstrate that you have a valid moral compass, right? And I agree with you, you do. In every way that you follow Jesus' teachings, it's going to make you a better person, right? But the reality is that Judeo-Christian teachings are unique to Judeo-Christian culture. Animists don't practice it. Muslims don't practice it. Hindus don't practice it. Communism doesn't practice it. Nazism doesn't practice it. They're fruits of the Enlightenment. The, 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 the reality is that Judeo-Christian teachings are unique to Judeo-Christian culture. This kind of trope of the atheist secularist, well, any culture, any religion teaches this. They talk about it in this lazy way, the golden rule. You can find it in all religions. No, you can't. You show me the verse in the Quran that teaches that you should love your neighbor as yourself and that you should treat others as you want to be treated. Those verses that Muslims use, Muslim commentators say that that's amongst the Muslims, not amongst anyone. Let's not get onto my personal opinions of Muslims or Islam, in fact, shall we say? Yeah, that's, that's, you should say Islam, yeah, because Islam. lots of Muslims don't yeah, follow yeah, Islam. Yeah, of course. And thus, they're better people because they don't. I would agree. Would um, you agree that Would you agree that some teachings can make you a worse person? Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Right. Of course. So I am. I one. Of my third argument was that Christianity, Christ's teachings, are the best teachings. So my challenge to you is, show me a better teacher than Jesus. Science doesn't teach morality. 
No, but it teaches you to think, and it teaches you to critically think. Right. Go on. I'll let you which, finish. Which, which is is why we've made such vast improvements in the world. Yeah. Okay. okay it's not. It's, it's a pretty crappy place, um, to be honest. To yeah. Live. Um, but we've made such advancements from science. Yes. Not from. If, if we were to go from religion and, and take a, a book, for instance, yep. we couldn't, all we could learn is, like you say, a, a moral compass or things like that. Yep. We couldn't learn what we have today if it was just solely based on religion. Can I, can I reply? Of course. Right. So once again, what you've done is you've demonstrated that you are ignorant of history because the scientific paradigm that you're celebrating in, right, who do you think gave that to you? It was the church. It was Christians, right? Christians, Christians, the Christian worldview um, is what gave birth to the modern scientific project. What gave birth to the modern scientific worldview. It's what funded it. It's what legitimized it. It's what gave it space. It's what gave it validity. You know, remember when I said it was the Christians that told the Norse pagans, thunder is just thunder, it's not your God, yeah. right? The demystification of natural processes is innate within Christian teachings. The investigation of natural processes emerges out of Christian spirituality. The first, the first scientists, the first scientists of the modern age were natural philosophers. They saw their inquiry into science as being a spirituality to learn the mind of God. Because God's mind was rational, his creation was rational, and because creation was rational, we could understand creation through rational rules and, and systemization. So that emerges from Christianity it, again itself. Okay, so you, you say that um, science basically uh, comes from Christianity. The, our our yeah. modern sci our modern scientific paradigm yeah. comes from Christianity. So then, how do you explain um, the, the, the the scientific method? The yeah. basic scientific method yeah. was actually from a Muslim man. No, it wasn't. It's, yeah, the, the, no. the golden light of um, enlightenment. Or no, so, Fa so Francis Bacon, who gave us uh, Occam, who gave us Occam's razor. And Sir Francis Bacon, who gave us the, um, what was the principle he gave us? Uh, the, well, the idea of using evidence, collective evidence, to, to build up to a point. These were both Christians. The, the scientific method is literally written in Christian text, Latin text. But it was, it was, it no. was the, well, the, the, the father of, of, of science, uh, maths or science is, is uh, it goes back to Greeks, it goes back right. to the Greeks. The mathematics is, is, is definitely Greek culture, which yeah, goes and, back and to the fact... Base of science is, No, it is wasn't, no, actually, it, the, Greeks, the Greeks used maths to make scientific discoveries, which demonstrates my first point, my sensible point, which is that maths tells us, evi maths is an evidence that there is a mind behind creation because the Greek philosophers used maths to make scientific discoveries independent of empirical observation, yeah, right? And, yeah, the empiric and the empirical observation came next, right? But, but, the, but, the, but the fact is that, that anyone can access mathematics because it's everywhere, of course, of course. right? Which is why science was practiced by lots of different cultures before Christianity, after Christianity, during Christianity. But the thing is, you, as a Caucasian white European, owe your allegiance to a scientific worldview because of the church, because of Christianity. But here's the point that, that you, 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 that's relevant to my third point, the idea about Christianity making us better people, is that when I said, well, give us a better teacher than Jesus, you said, without any flippancy, you said science, which tells me as a scientist that, well, I'm not a scientist, but someone who <laughs> studied science, right? That you don't understand science. Science is a discourse uh, and description of natural processes. It is not in any way a description of um, the idea of meaning or values, morality or ethics. That's outside of 
scientific discourse. So the fact that we in the West use science to make lives better for people was because our use of science was guided by Christian values, Christian ethics, and a Christian worldview. Take those away and replace them, say, with Nazi ideology, and you end up with the Holocaust. Take them away and replace them with liberal ideology, and you end up with the guillotine. Take them away and replace them with Islamic ideology, and you end up with perpetual jihad. How you use science is guided by your religious values. Science itself gives you no values by what to do with the methodology of science. You can use it for good or evil. Liberals have massacred more people through abortion than Hitler has ever, or ever managed to do. We're up to 90 million. Give it a couple of more decades and liberals will have slaughtered more people than the communists. Right? Still behind the Muslims, who over 1400 years have killed even more people than that. But the, the, the reality is, how you use science is guided by your values and your sense of meaning. It's going to move. Yeah, it's all right. The sun is... Yeah, yeah, You can stand there if you like. I'll oh, stand yeah, there. Oh, yeah, cheers. Uh, well, are you sure? No, because yeah, the yeah, sun's in your It's all right. Right. No, I do no, this all the time. We can, we'll, yeah. we'll spill it. 50 okay, 50, okay, fine. fine. So my point to you is that you offered science as an alternative to Jesus' teachings. I want to suggest to you that that argument doesn't work. So now I'm going to, unless you can defend it, I'm going to invite you again to show me a better teacher than Jesus. So either defend your premise, defend your premise, or find me a better teacher than Jesus. Well, for me, a better teacher, person than Jesus. Than, than Jesus. See, here's my thing: is I don't know a lot about Jesus. That's the problem. Right now, that's is, a great. Is, is, that's that's a good thing to admit, because if you don't know the teachings of Jesus then it is incumbent upon you to investigate what it is you might be passing up. Because I'm literally telling you that Jesus is the best teacher you can find. Now that's a boldy claim, that's a ballsy claim, right? Like you've yeah, got to have yeah. big testicles yeah. to make that argument, you have have right? You, you what? You also have to have proof. Yes, you do. And, and the proof is, you, from a subjective point of view, my first evidence to you is that when you first tried to appeal to the fact that you didn't need Jesus, you actually used Jesus's teachings to validate your own position. So you went to Jesus's teachings to argue that you were a good moral person. And if you're following Jesus's teachings, you are, right? My second, right, is my own sort of subjective uh, uh, ad hoc kind of evidence, which is that in my own personal study, of philosophers like Nietzsche, uh, like Adam Smith, like Karl Marx, uh, you know, like, you know, or, and, and in my te study of religious teachers like Buddha uh, and Krishna and Muhammad, I personally don't see anyone better than Jesus Christ as a moral teacher. So you owe it to yourself to investigate Jesus' teachings. To know who Jesus is. To know what he claims about himself. To know what he teaches. My, just, my, my main issue is that religion doesn't really... You could say to me, Jesus is the best teacher, blah, blah, blah. Without yeah. me reading it, I, I would just have to take your word for it. Yeah, no, I'm inviting you to, to, to doubt and in, I'm absolutely. inviting you to investigate. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is science, fact-based, and we need we need proof. Yeah. My issue is is that religion hasn't proved very much, whereas science has proven thousands of things. Look at the hydrogen. Millions, actually. Yeah, millions. Um, I didn't want to say millions, just in case I might have... I'm, I'm, not, an op I'm um, not in opposition to science. I believe in the Big Bang, I believe in evolution, I believe okay, in... Great. I believe that's, in that's physics, awesome. like, awesome. I, I'm not against science. There is no opposition between being a Christian and being a scientist. There's no, there's no, there's no conflict between these two things, right? The, the, only, the, only people that, the only people that argue that way from the, the church, it's people that don't understand science. From 
the, the world that you come from, it's people that don't understand Christianity. Of course. Right? So it's ignorance on both sides. Yeah. Right? And, and, but, but science makes the claim we're theorists. So, yeah. we, you know, we're, we're not absolute, you know, everything is open to change. Hence why science will never say that religion doesn't exist. Right. Because we can neither prove... God doesn't history. exist. Yeah. God. Any, any religion, yeah. Whether, you know, God. God. Yeah. 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 The, I mean, all scientists agree religion exists because it's experiential and evidential. Like, they, they, they you're using the word religion wrong there. Okay, okay. Well, who says science of that? Right, so, so my point to you is, my point to you is, right, is this. Is that you're saying, well, well science has proved, and we both agree, millions of things. Let, let's go further and say tens of millions of things, right? I am happy to say science has proven tens of millions of things, right? It's brilliant. I love science. I study science. Science is great. I'll have a scientific conversation with you about black holes, the Big Bang, event, horizon, ba event yeah. horizons, uh, the cosmological background radiation, the, the formation of planets and stars and moons every day of the week, right? Because I love it. But the point is, that doesn't tell me anything about meaning or values or ethics or morality or internal spirituality. That discourse, science has got nothing to say about. And the truth is, we need that discourse, we need that navigation in that realm to build a good society. The reason why our society is going downhill at the moment is because we've put all our chips on materialism and we've forgotten the interiority of the soul and the cultivation of the soul. I'm having a conversation with him, I'll talk to you in a second. Can you, yeah, no, I think. Yeah, no, no, I'm having a conversation with him. Hey, it's a productive discussion. So, yeah. Yeah, go on. Um, you, why do you need a book, though, that says, no, this is how to be morally, morally right, yeah. this is what ethics are, yeah. this is, why do you need that? Okay. Why do you need that? And, and also, what separates, obviously, Christianity from... Uh, Islam is that they believe I think that the world was created by a person yeah do you believe that as well do you believe that God created the world yes because if you believe that then then how can you believe in the Big Bang right so that's a really good question I'll give you an answer right firstly when when I read Genesis for example I'm not committed and the church has never been committed to a literal interpretation of Genesis right it was a Bronze Age text for Bronze Age people. Okay. There would have been no point God saying to a bunch of recently freed Hebrew slaves, uh, okay, this is how planetoids are formed from collapsing dust clouds, right? They wouldn't have known what on earth was happening. Genesis is a description of the worship, uh, the temple worship that the Hebrew people were called to celebrate. The garden is a metaphor for the temple. Adam and Eve are metaphors for priests. The fruit, uh, the tree of the fruit of good and evil is a symbol of the law because it exposes sin and it exposes death working in us because of sin. The symbol of, um, the, symbol of the tree of life is a symbol of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection because they were forbidden to participate because it was not yet time but once they participate they receive eternal life which is what we Christians believe what happens with Jesus the order of creation is a polemic against the pagan gods of Egypt because all of the gods all, all of the natural phenomena that are discussed in Genesis they had a, a pagan Egyptian god as their equivalent, right? So it's a polemic against Egyptian religion to teach the Hebrews not to follow the religion that they'd been exposed to for 400 years. It was not a scientific treatise, right? It, it's not meant to be read as a scientific treatise, right? It's not talking about science at all. There are some pretty amazing facts though in Genesis. So, for example, I'll give you one, right? Light before the sun, 
light before the sun, right? M lots of atheists often try to mock Genesis for that, right? But it backfires spectacularly because as the dust cloud that forms the sun collapses, it increases in heat. And what does something do when it increases in heat? It gets brighter, it gives off what? Light. Light. So was there light before there was a sun? Yes, there was. Sorry, yeah. Yes, right? Recently, just, I think it was just this year or just last year, they've done models about the moon's formation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they've come to the, 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 a, a, a model that, that is gaining some traction amongst the scientific community. Debate is still out, not saying it's secured, but there's a model now that's gaining traction amongst physicists, right? Is, is that the, the moon formed in a single day. Right? In, in Genesis, it said that all the waters gather unto one place so that dry land might appear. If all the water's in one place, where's all the land? Have you heard of Pangea? Yeah, yeah, right? briefly, I'm not. Now, again, I'm not trying to say that Genesis is a scientific treatise, right? But here's another one that's going to blow your mind, right? The point at which nuclear fusion happens in a sun, right? is the demarcation between a sun forming and a sun existing. Agreed? Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. 100%. And, and that happens in a microsecond. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Yeah. So that means that the sun is formed in a day, isn't it? Of course, of course. What, what we does... know is a day now, yeah. Yeah, so, the, so Genesis says the sun was formed in a day. Right? So, so these are pretty... These are not... These are pretty, claims. well, they're bold they, claims, yeah. but you can investigate them, yeah, yeah, of course, right? Of course. You can go and check how long it, you know, once nuclear fission, uh, fusion begins, is yeah, it, do you have a sun? And, and, and how quick does that happen? Yeah, yeah, right, once that chain reaction has started, you have a sun, and that happens in a millisecond, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, Which means literally the sun was formed in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what it says in Genesis. So there's some pretty miraculous uh, statements of fact in Genesis, but it shouldn't be treated like a scientific textbook. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely investi investigate these, these claims. And Have you got a Bible? I haven't. No, I've, no, I've never read it. Um, I would like I to can. give you one as a gift, um, if that's all right. I'd also yeah, give you my yeah. contact details, and you can keep in touch with me. Let's meet up outside the park and talk. Are you in London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to yeah, grab yeah. a coffee sometime? Yeah, sure, why not? Why yeah, not? brilliant. Okay, uh, let, me, let me give you a gift. We can maybe have a longer uh, discussion about AI then, because oh. I'm actually, I'm a programmer. Do you want to talk about it now? I, I think other people might have questions. I don't want to... All right, wanna, no worries. I don't want to be like, oh. So here's a Bible. Okay. I'm, I'm going to both do you a favor and a non-favor. This is a King James Version which means that it is written in beautiful prosaic English, but okay. it can be a bit difficult to read. Yeah, uh, so you might occasionally need to consult a thesaurus or a dictionary uh, to just, if you get stumped on a word or two. Thank you. Right, thank that's you my so gift much. to you. Thank Here's you so much. my card, if you thank want you. to get in touch. Yeah, thank you so and much. And we'll go oh, out yeah, and grab a- Yeah, have a card, that's Yeah, it. and we'll go out and grab a coffee. We're really yeah, lovely yeah, speaking very, to you. Yeah, and you. And Let's you, talk about you. AI next time. Yes, yes, right. I'm a programmer, so I, I program all yeah. the wonderful things. So I'm doing an AI model at the moment. Yeah. So be interesting to see where that goes with religion and stuff. Yeah, let's talk. I think it's going to be, a, I think it's a very important talking point. Yeah, yeah for sure. For loads of reasons. I think it's going to dramatically change the world. Um, yes. For instance, it's already found a new drug for cancer treatment. Yeah. And that model was out, well, it was under review for six months. Yeah. And within three weeks, well, I, 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 I think we've got a, 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 a big thing to occur um, with AI. But let's talk about it another time. Absolutely. absolutely. Great talking Thank to you. you. Yeah, and you. And this is what, this is what Speaker's some, Corner is. I'm going to go and ask the Muslims that question. Don't now. get I'm duped. Not Muslims, Islam. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't um, get duped.
Well, yeah, I should be all right, I guess. Yeah, the charlatans, they, they, they'll, they don't get duped. One trick that they do is this, they'll, they'll ask you a question, they'll get you to go, yes, yes, Yeah, leading yes, questions, yeah. Yes, no, it's actually, it's programming. Psychological. It's programming. Yeah, so yeah. they'll ask you a question where you go, yes, then they'll ask you another one and you go, yes, and then they'll ask you another one and you go, yes, and then you'll ask another one and you go, yes, and then they'll go, think it, no, then, they, no, then they'll go, no, no, listen. Then they'll go, right, do you want to say your shahada? And because you've said yes three or four times you already, yes. your brain just trips into going yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Before you know it, you're agreeing to something. And it's very hard as well when you have people behind you talking. It's, yeah, yeah. You say yes. Well, the thing is, if you start to stand up to them, you get little, you get others trying to start intimidating you. Okay. Right. So, so don't don't let them cajole you or or trick you. All right. All right. Come right. back and talk to us if you need to. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Lovely to talk to you. Yeah, God bless. And you, and you. Right, bro. You wanted to ask a question.